So I first want to say welcome to a depressing ass video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not being serious. But today I'm going to tell you guys what's been going on, which is literally a lot and it's crazy. I'm not even going to lie. So first things first, don't mind me. I just dyed my hair like five minutes ago. Well, I just washed it like five minutes ago. So it looks like I got a hairline here and everything, but let's ignore that. And let me just tell you this crazy, crazy story about what's going on with my cats. Three of them. Now I have two. And soon I'll probably have one. I'm not even going to lie. It's crazy. But, um, so I do want to say, like, if anything, you know, talking about an animal passing away or anything like that is hard for you or a trigger point, please don't watch this video. I don't want it to upset you that much. I just want to tell you what's going on with my personal story. So let's go back to, like... November, late November or early December it might have been. I can't remember for sure, but I have my one cat who I've had since childhood. He's going to be 15 this year. I'm 22, so I've had him like my whole life basically feels like. And he'll be 15 this year. He wasn't feeling good back in like December, I guess it was. Um yeah, it was December because it was when I got my other cat. Um it's when I got the kitten for Christmas. So I took him to the vet. He had like some upper respiratory stuff. He was like sneezing, coughing, not coughing, but just not, not being right. So I was like, okay, well, he's probably sick. Take him to the vet, find out that he has a grade four heart murmur and that he has um, heart failure. So he was, they did chest x-rays and everything and his heart was enlarged pretty, pretty good and laying kind of against his chest wall. So the heart murmur is like, I guess, very, very loud. Um, so he got medication, stuff like that that he's supposed to be taking. He won't take it. I have done everything. Now, mind you, this cat, like I said, is 15. He's never had his nails cut in 15 years because he gets very nasty. Like, he's the sweetest baby, but he could be very freaking nasty, like mean. And, um, so for a couple days, he let me give him his pill. I would say, like, four days. He was on three different ones. One of them was twice a day and one was once a day. So he hated that, first of all. Or I'm sorry, two of them were twice a day and one of them was once a day. Did I say that? So he hated it. Of course he did. And I would give it to him and he would just try to snap at me, like bite me. I tried giving it to him with like a pill thing and he just, he won't even let me put it in his mouth. I've tried to scruff him on the neck and shoot it in his mouth. I've wrapped him in a blanket. Like I'm telling you, it's impossible. So I was like, okay, well, let me just give him a break for a while, <laughs> four days after he starts the medication. And I was like, let me give him a break for a while and see, like, maybe I can coax him back into doing it. Tried putting the pills in those pill pockets. I tried dissolving it in tuna. I tried crushing it up in milk because he drinks milk like a fiend. Nothing. So don't even think like that. I didn't try anything and just said, oh, well, too bad. I tried everything for days. Um, so then, okay. <clears throat> he's in heart failure. Great. Um, not to mention, like, he's just getting really old and gray. And I was watching him the other day. Let me fix my hair really quick. Jeez, facelift or not. I was watching him the other day, and I was like, wow, he's having a really hard time. He'll get up, and then he'll be, like, stiff, and he'll start walking, like, all stiff. And his little arms crack and stuff. So I can tell he definitely is probably, you know, getting arthritis or osteoporosis. Who knows? <laughs> anyway... Let's go to the next, what's the word? The next incident, okay? So as you probably saw, because when I did, if you follow my ASMR channel, if you watch that, I did a video all about my piercings and my kitten who I had just gotten, I think like a couple weeks before that was in the video. And so I got him, he was five months old when I adopted him in December. He was acting weird for the last couple weeks. I would say, like, he just hadn't been himself. Like, usually he loved to climb on me and be held and cuddled and just always on me wherever I am. He was always like that. Then I would notice for about, like, five to seven days, he was just, like, not around. He was hiding, like, this pillow here against the couch. So say it was like this, but in the corner couch piece, he would go behind it and, like, hide. And he would just sleep there for hours. And here's the thing he was like having he was having diarrhea in the house which was weird i was like oh my god what's going on but here's why i didn't think anything of it and i blame myself and i feel bad but i couldn't have known when we had like when i had brought him home 
for the first time when I adopted him, I had switched the food that he was already on because they were just like, oh, he can eat whatever, like just put him on whatever. The rescue said that. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna feed him the grain-free stuff that I feed my cats. So when I switched that up, um, he was sick for a couple days. He was like ha vomiting diarrhea, you know, he's just sick. Like, that's how we are. Think about it, you go on vacation sometimes, you eat the way that you don't normally eat and you're just like, oh my God, I feel so disgusting and like sick. I mean, that's me. <laughs> so I didn't think anything of it. Well, I had just switched the food like two days prior to that and when he started acting weird. So I was like, oh yeah, he's just sick because I switched the food. And the reason I switched the food again is I had to put them on a weight control because they are all a little bit big. So I was putting them on a different food to control like their weight because they're all indoor cats and they're lazy. <laughs> so fast forward a couple days, this was about five days later, like four days later, no more diarrhea really that I've noticed or anything in the house like that, it happened twice. He wasn't throwing up, he was just hiding and sleeping and being weird. So I was like, okay, whatever, like maybe this is just him because he's getting older now. I didn't think anything of it. and. I'm the type of person that if there's something wrong with my cats, I rush them to the vet, as you will see in a minute when I get to the third story. So I'm not like, I never brush it off. If something's weird with my cats, like I will take them right to the vet. But I wasn't suspecting anything with him, that's what was weird. I was like, okay, he's just acting funny. But he didn't see, like he was still eating, drinking, going to the litter box, so you know, that's normally okay behavior. So I was like, okay, come home on, March 12th, I came home late, I would say like 2.30 in the morning. Came home and he was on this couch, just laying down behind the pillow again. So he was sleeping and I checked on him, I came over and I was like, oh hey bud, like what are you doing, you okay? He was just hanging out and he was fine. So I went over and I gave them a little bit of food, the food bowl is over here, um, their food is there on the floor. Sprinkled some food in because um, I was like, okay, they're probably a little bit hungry, I haven't been home for a while now. And I go to bed. So I had my door shut that night because I used to sleep with my door shut every night since I had gotten the kitten because he just, oh, he would come in, walk on your head, walk, like just, he, but he wouldn't lay down, you know what I mean? Like if he would walk on my head and lay down, okay. He wouldn't lay down, he would just keep doing it over and over. So I was like, all right, you can't be in here because I'm very selfish with my sleep. Door was shut, my other cat, Cal, is meowing at the door. It's 6.30 in the morning, he's hungry, that's what time he always meows and wakes me up to come put out food. Um, so I was like, okay, well, whatever, he's so probably hungry, and I was thinking, it's weird, because I was thinking to myself, I'm just go to sleep, like, I've only been sleeping for, like, three hours now, three and a half hours, I'm gonna just, like, wait a few more minutes, and I'll feed him in, like, 7, 7.30. Well, it's a good thing I didn't, because when I came out, I saw the most horrific sight that I literally still picture in my head all the time. I come out, my room's back here, I come out. Right here on the floor is Tiny, the kitten. Well, his name is Xavier. Called him Tiny, that was just his nickname and basically what I just called him. So his government is Xavier, but his actual name was Tiny. Come out, he's laying on the f carpet. I have a little carpet where the, food's the food bowls are. You can't see it, but he's laying there, weirdly. But here's the thing, I was thinking, Oh, maybe he's just like sleeping. He was probably hungry waiting for the food because I have seen him lay there before, but not like this. I started to suspect, like when I started waking up a little bit, I was like, damn, something's really off. I turned the light on and I started, I sprinkled food like in all of the bowls. And now mind you, Tiny is like, <laughs> he loved food. He loved to just eat so much all the time. And he's not moving. And I was like, um, okay, are you sleeping? What's wrong? So if I could tell you how he was laying, he was mostly laying on his stomach, just slightly like turned to the side and his neck was like way out. So his face, this whole part, and his neck was laying flat on the floor and like he was just like on his side a little bit, just not moving, not doing anything, but his eyes were open. And I was like, oh, that's not good. So I was like this, I said, oh, come here, but what's wrong? And I like put my hand under his neck here and I like lifted him up a little bit off the floor. And that's when I realized he couldn't move at all. Like his legs, he was trying to move them like a little bit and he was going rah, rah, like crying and just like, just crying every time I touched him and I would like put him back down and I said, oh my God, he can't move. There's something wrong. And so I started freaking out. I FaceTimed my mom who, I live in Arizona, she lives in Pennsylvania, luckily, it's three hours ahead, it was three hours ahead, so she was already awake. And I'm like, mom, 
mom, I think Tiny is dying. And she's like, why do you think that? Like, okay, what happened? Why do you think that? And I showed him on FaceTime. I was like, look, he's just laying here. Like, he's lifeless. He's just laying here weird and like, he can't move. I tried to move him, he can't move. And she's like, okay, get him and take him to the emergency vet, which I had already planned to do, but I was just like, you know, oh my God, I'm here by myself. And like, what the hell is going on? My baby's over here dying. So I didn't even put him in a carrier. I literally scooped him up in this blanket like bundled him up and like picked him up, took him, set him on the car, uh, the car seat next to me, drove to the vet, got there. Um, and to make a long story short, cause you probably don't want to hear an hour long talk about everything that happened, but to make a long story short, as soon as I got to the vet, I just thought about it for some reason. I was like, let me check his gums and see like, maybe he's bleeding internally. So I'm like, if his gums are clear, or, like, like very light, he's probably bleeding. So I picked his cheek up like this and I looked his gums are like translucent. They were so pale and there's just nothing to them. So I was like, oh, I said, he's not going to make it. Like I already knew. I was like, he's not going to make it. So take him to the emergency vet. They want a $600 deposit before they'll even touch him because they were like, okay, well, since like everything you said, we have to do like a critical assessment. So they'll put him on oxygen. They'll do whatever they can to like get him, you know, reset, not resuscitated, but just better revived. <laughs> um, so I did that, I was like, okay, like whatever, just take him. I just like wanna know, like I don't want him to be suffering. So I didn't care, I was like, fine, just take him and work on him. So I would say like 15, 10 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes later, the um, one assistant was like, um, we're gonna put you in the room because the doctor's gonna come talk to you. So I was like, yeah, I figured. They put me in the room that is for euthanasias. I already knew, because I looked at it and it was just talking about like, you know, if you've been to the vet's office, you know which room that is. So I go in there and she said, basically what's going on is I tapped the fluid in his stomach. His stomach was distended. And what happened was he had FIP, which is feline infectious periodontis. Um, if you've heard of it, if not, that's what it is. And basically what happens is a cell mutation that starts attacking the good cells that are supposed to fight the virus. Like basically it just goes bad in, and it's a mutation inside them. So when I had got him to the vet, he had no proteins, no potassium, no immune system. Like it had just eaten everything of him. Like it was just like he was, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, so what's crazy is I felt so guilty. Like, I felt so sad because um, this must have been going on for the past week that I thought that he was okay. But I never like, you know, I told the vet, I was like, oh my God, like I never thought anything. And she said, the problem is there's really no good way to test for FIP, she said, and like most people don't, and they don't know that their cat has it until it's laying here dying on the table, just like yours. And I was just like, wow, like he's only seven months old. Five, six, yeah, he was seven months old. I was just like, what? Like, this is crazy. And it's really deadly to kittens specifically. It's, for, it's in kittenhood, they said, is when it's most common, and it has a 95% fatality rate in kittens, so. We had to euthanize him. We, I'm saying we. I had to euthanize him, but the vet obviously did it. And let me show you guys. Trigger warning, because this is sad, but this was um, this was right before the vet came in to euthanize him. If you can see this, he was just kind of laying there, like just lifeless. Like this is him. They put a catheter in him to drain like the fluid that was in his abdomen, like from the FIP. And just look at his little face. This is my baby. And there was just like nothing. So she administered the medication through the catheter that he had in. And he was really fighting for a long time. And that's what was so hard. Like I had my mom on FaceTime. I had it set up like right here so she could see. And I was like laying over tiny. And I was telling him like, you know, you're such a good boy. And the vet was like, oh, honey, you're such a brave boy. And we were just talking to him. And then he was just fighting like his heart was just beating for a while after they euthanized him i was just like wow and she's like okay he's still here like his heart beats faint probably like another minute two minutes later and this i mean this is going on like five minutes now since she gave him the medication a couple minutes later and then finally she's like okay he's no longer here like you'll see that he looks like he's still breathing but his heart has stopped and i was devastated like me and my mom are both on facetime just bawling like a mess my mom loved this kitten when she came to visit he loved her he was like on her 24 7 like she just loved him to death and so i was freaking devastated like 
here's my cat and then a couple minutes later like he's just gone out of nowhere like nothing that could have really been assigned to prevent it so that's that story tiny is tiny passed away on friday the 13th so yeah so let me tell you the third and final story of what's going on. So Dark is the first one. He's in heart failure, 15. He's black. Let me sh black and white cat. Let me show you um, what he looks like just so we could put... I should just put these on the screen, but I'm just going to pull them up on my phone because that's easier. So he, like I said... Damn. Here's him. Super cute. Super cute. Super mean sometimes. <laughs> Um, don't mind my neighbor, I guess, is leaving, so that's that loud-ass noise. Uh, so that's dark. He's in heart failure. I don't know, like, what's gonna go on with him, because I can tell as the days go by, he's just getting a little bit weaker. Still eating, still doing everything normal, like, you know, but of course, like I said, 15 this year, he's gonna start deteriorating. And last but not least, finally, the third cat, Cal. Which is the one, oh, everybody's seen Cal, he's always in the back of my videos, because he can never leave me alone. Um, but here's Cal on the counter where he shouldn't be, and he knows. Watch this. What are you doing? Yeah, meow, because you know you're not supposed to be up there. So, two days ago, literally two days ago, as I'm filming this, I'm uploading this the day I'm filming it. Two days ago, he's out and about running around the house, playing around, doing whatever. And then I'm in my recording room and my last room packaging some orders. He comes in behind me and I'm watching him and he's trying to sit down, but he's like, he can't sit right. And he'll keep, he keeps like trying to sit and then he'll like get back up and like try to sit again, like move around and just, I was like, okay, he's not comfortable for some reason. Watched him for a couple minutes. He laid down on his side and his legs were like this, like just rapidly shaking. So I went to like pick him up and he starts yelling in pain. I was like, oh my God, this is the toughest cat I've ever seen. He never has any issues. What the hell is going on? What, what's wrong? He was just fine. So I was like, okay, something's weird. So watch him for a couple more minutes. I was like, okay, let me just observe. He tries to get up and starts screaming in pain. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot go through this again. What is going on? Literally didn't even take any chances. I didn't even say, oh, well, wait, no. I put his ass in the carrier and drove him right to the vet as a walk-in. Well, because of everything going on, I couldn't even go in the building, which is good because I didn't want to. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go in anywhere really right now. So they were really cool. The assistants came out to the car to get him, took him back. The doctor called me on the phone as I was in the parking lot. Long story short, this cat has hip dysplasia. So his ball and socket joints in his hips never, like they are not formed correctly, so they don't sit properly. Hip dysplasia, which then caused him to have arthritis now. He's four and he has arthritis. He's also overweight because like, you saw that bug? He's also overweight because like I said, he's, he just eats. Like he's always been a big boy. He's like, I don't know, he's a, he's a big boy. I'm not even gonna lie, let me see. You can probably see in that video, but let me see if I have any more pictures that you can really tell. Like, he's just a long cat. He's long and he's just big and muscular. So, they also say he has a laxating patella, so his knees aren't even right either. I'm just like, oh my God. So I said, okay, so what's the verdict? Like, what should we do? And then, not to mention, they call me back and said, oh, and by the way, we would like to take chest x-rays because I also hear a heart murmur. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Are you joking? So, okay, cool, do what you need to do, call me back. Like I said, that was the verdict. His heart, they said, looked good, it wasn't enlarged, so I was just like, oh, thank God. Um, the verdict is he needs to be on a diet, which the other cat does too dark because I think he has arthritis, like I said, as well. But they were like, we don't want him to end up being like a bedridden kitty and I said, I don't want that either. So he needs to lose weight. He needs to be on some fish oil pills and some other, not pills, but fish oil supplements and stuff like that that I'm going to do in his food. Get him to lose some weight. And they said that, you know, he'll probably have a lot, a lot easier time. Um, so he got pain medicine and he got some anti-inflammatory pills that he has to take for only one more day, two more days. And then his pills for pain are as needed. So like if he's limping, it's gabapentin, it's pain medication, I guess, for him. And um, I don't know why I said I guess for him, it, it is. 
So that's the verdict. That's what's been going on since literally all, I mean, it started with Dark finding out that he has heart failure in December, but then it's just been back to back. Like Tiny died in March. Now Cal's, I'm dealing with that because yesterday he was in pain all day. Not to mention, I gave him the medicine after the vet. Like after I brought him back, I gave him the medicine. He's laying there like unconscious. I thought that he, I thought I gave him too much or something. Like, I was getting paranoid. I was like, oh my God, is like, did I do something wrong? So this has like been causing me so much stress and anxiety. It's just been one thing after another, one vet bill after another. Oh my God. So that's what's up in my life. How are you? <laughs> but I wanted to just film this video and give you guys an update. Um, I did tell the story about Tiny on Instagram live, like a couple weeks, like, I don't know, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. And um, a lot of people were coming like midway through and they were just like, wait, what happened? Start over, like what's going on? So this is the story of what happened and what's going on with the other two. So keep me in your thoughts, <laughs> send me good vibes because I need them right now. And wherever you are, stay safe, stay healthy. And I'm thinking of all you guys, we'll get through this together. You know, this is some crazy ish going on, you know it is, but we'll get through it. And that's on a motivational tip. <laughs> All right, guys. So I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. And till next time.